you should write an autobiography someday. Well, you know, at this point, I've been around and making games for three quarters of the time that video games have been in existence. I have gone back and played the older games. Uh, sometimes it's a bit of a letdown. Things weren't as good as you thought they were back in the day. Sometimes it's a lot of fun, though. There's all these intricacies in the titles that you forget if there's been maybe 10 or 20 years since you made it. Well, I've been playing the, the PlayStation 1 Crash and Spyro titles with my nephews and nieces because they have a very, very old PlayStation 1. Pixels the size of your fist. But the gameplay is there. Those games were distinguished by simple control stats that needed to be used in a deep fashion because the games were, in fact, despite being cute, brutally difficult. Crash Bandicoot 1 is one of the hardest games on PlayStation. And so you know, we were trying to take all of that and give it a next generation twist. So in that case, the twist is a character that grows and has this 5,000 parts physics sim and all of that. But at the heart, it is that same sort of feeling that you have just a couple buttons that you will be using, but you, you will need to learn to master them. Do you see Knack as kind of like a mascot for PS4? Is that your highest ambition for it? I think we're well past uh, the era when mascots uh, exist in video games. I mean, even with Crash, we were already moving out of that era. Crash was the top selling brand on PlayStation 1 and not its official mascot. Uh, a lot of that has to do with just that um, we're all getting older as we play these games and we want to play games with more mature themes. And so now, when you look at something like Knack as an adult gamer, it really is sort of that throwback title kind of feeling. Or as a, a new gamer, maybe um, somebody who's just getting into video games or maybe who's been playing games on tablets and wants to try out the full console experience. It can be that on-ramp mm -hmm. into the world of gaming. But either way, it's not going to be a large enough part of gaming that a character like this could be a mascot. I'm curious, what is your favorite part of the industry? I like not having to do the same thing every day. In the good old days, uh, I was working with Insomniac and Naughty Dog, and maybe I'd be programming um, the engine for Jack and Daxter, and then I'd also be doing level design for Ratchet and Clank. And the great thing about that is, you're sick of doing level design, what do you do? You go program the next week. Right now, it's, um, frankly, it's a little bit of a strain on the brain. Um, I had one day where I had a, a meeting to discuss our script because our game wasn't funny enough and we wanted to punch it up. And so we were, what kind of jokes can we put in the game? And in the same day, I have a meeting where we're looking at timing for circuitry measured in picoseconds and we're looking at power consumption. And these are very, very different sides of the brain. Uh, so uh, it's, it's been quite an experience. There is a staggering amount of responsibility. I mean, it was a small team that designed the hardware, and, and we'd look around in meetings and realize that either we made it happen or very, very bad things could happen to the company. That isn't really stress as much as just something in the back of your mind telling you that you had better do a good job. The first crash was uh, a two-year experiment as we were trying to figure out how to take um, traditional 2D action platform gameplay and move it into 3D. And I know it looks simple from today's perspective, but can, I can assure you that we had to build five complete levels of that game, five of them, before we had a single one that worked. Uh, the, the flavor of the hardware design that's unusual is just that it can take two or three years to resolve an issue. And that isn't because you're indecisive, that's because you're gathering information, you're looking at cost, you're looking at how technology uh, evolves, you're having a lot of conversations with all of the third-party developers. Pretty soon, two or three years have, have gone by. Who do you think you've learned the most from in your career? Pretty much any project is an opportunity to learn something. And one of the things I like about doing multiple projects is I get to learn at double speed or triple speed because I'm doing two or three games. When I was working on Crash Bandicoot, um, Shu Yoshida was actually our Japanese side producer and I learned a lot about usability through working with him because we were typical American developers. We wanted to be pretty, but we really didn't think about the player that much. But, I mean, they're really all learning experiences. It was great working with Ted Price and Insomniac, who is a fantastic creative director, and watching the way in which he operates and how um, he can really um, work with the team to construct a vision. That was a learning experience as well.
Well, I mean, right now, my interaction with Shu is fairly limited. Um, Shu said, Mark, if you want to make Crash Bandicoot for the 21st century, um, and that was kind of the tagline for Knack, he said, go ahead and do it. It's great to see that we'll have you know, a broader range of titles on the hardware. That was basically our approval process for the game. Well, it's certainly easier to talk to developers because I'm making a game on PlayStation 4. I don't need to have an abstract conversation. I can take it more from, from my perspective of we're making this game and this is the approach that we've taken and this is how it works with what the uh, SDK can provide. Every team approaches development in a different way. So just a simple question such as how many CPU use are you comfortable in using in the hardware? I found the outliers for this. One team said anything more than one CPU it's really hard for us to use and one team said we know how to use 1,000 CPUs. You can, you can give us an unlimited number, we've got that covered. But the typical teams would say four or eight, and that's why um, PlayStation 4 has eight CPUs. That is the answer we got from the development community. There was just no way a priori to tell that that was going to be what they said. I mean, I really had to go out and speak to 30-something developers and get their feedback on it. Do you think there's any things about the PS4 you'd like to clear up? Well, and John Carmack came out recently and said that the uh, console hardware seemed to be about the same level of performance. And you know, I, I think that probably the, the power of the PS4 is a little bit underappreciated there in that statement. But you have to take it from John Carmack's perspective. This is a man who builds spaceships, right? <laughs> and so from his perspective, uh, he's 20 years out in the future and looking back, and they all kind of look the same. I've talked to him maybe once or twice over the years. Okay. Um, but I'm a, there is a true genius for you. You don't think you're a true genius? I'm a very practical guy. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's not the same kind of leaps of creativity. I mean, if you look at what John did with engine work or what um, Tim is doing with engine work at Epic, I mean, these are guys with unbelievable levels of vision. And my world is much more practical. It's, you know, I want to make something that people can use. Or if you look at the games that I work on, you know, Crash Bandicoot, very nice game, but we weren't trying to be the most creative guys in town. We were trying to be the guys that would make a game that could be broadly enjoyable. Sure. And so, you know, it's very heartfelt when I say, you know, John's a genius, I do mean it. I think there's something very, very different that's going on there. So the big trend has been recently um, that teams get larger and larger and that the market is increasingly focused on the top 10 or the top 20. Uh, even NAC, which is a large enough team, um, is really at the small size for a modern AAA console team. On PlayStation 4, though, what's happened is we're now filling in from the low size. So we've got one-person teams, we've got four or five-person teams making the indie titles that we're all talking about, and that's going to end up growing to be, I suspect, 10 or 20-person team. And digital distribution is really going to enable this environment where you can have, say, the $60 package goods product at, at the one end, and at the other end, you can have a title made by a few guys that the budget was low enough that you could sell 20,000 units and still be happy with your success. You still get the thrill of a small team every once in a while? Do you go out and visit indie games and the indie dev studios and kind of see like, oh, this is like us back in those days? Is it absolutely not like us back in those days. <laughs> um, so Atari was one-person teams or two-person teams, but because it was coin-operated games, there was a dedicated hardware and um, those cabinets cost $3,000. Just the infrastructure that surrounded what you were doing was huge. There were hundreds of thousands of dollars of costs outside of that one programmer. So consequently, as that one programmer, you were tracked, you were greenlit, you had to do all kinds of status meetings about the project that you were doing. So it's a one-person project with multiple levels of management. If you look at what we were doing at Sega, um, that was, in some sense, I hate to say it, shovelware. It was one programmer, one designer, three months, and you just shipped it. And the quality was low, and they didn't Mm -hmm. And that is so far from what we call indie today, which is the labor of love and you never know when it'll be done. It'll be done when it'll be done, when it achieves the creator's vision. Well, when the PlayStation 4 launches, I will get one, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, I sincerely doubt it will be the very first one that's made. Okay. But you know, I am looking forward to having it in my living room. It's a, it's a nice, smaller box. I can, I can put it next to my uh, PlayStation 3, year one PlayStation 3. And uh, the, um, the contrast in size and power consumption should be pretty obvious. I'm a uh, creative director for the first time on NAC, and it turns out to be uh, a lot of fun. 
Uh, and I'm thinking that's pretty much what I'll be doing on some title once it launches. And it would also be nice to find a um, project of some kind that's a little smaller. The, the hardware project, if you put everybody in, was probably well, certainly many hundreds of people involved. Mm -hmm. And making a game these days is also uh, a very big um, process. And I'm just thinking it might be fun to uh, work to some degree on something that's a little bit more nimble, a little bit more conceptually driven, a little bit faster to go from an idea to something that people can enjoy playing.